What's up everybody, I'm Tani Rose and today I'm gonna to be doing a henna mask treatment on my hair. And before we get into the who, what, when, where, how, and why, I wanna get started with making this mixture. This is a henna that I'm gonna be using this time. I got it at my local Indian store. I chose this one because it said black on it and I don't know if it's actually gonna make my hair black because henna has a chemical in it called Lawson which stains reddish oranges so I will see. Even though henna is great for your hair, it still gives you a um, dry feeling to your hair. So in addition to the deep conditioning treatment I'm gonna be doing after the mask, I'm also gonna add these two oils in to prevent that feeling of dryness as much as I can. And as you can see, I'm almost out of the olive oil, so I'm just gonna use the rest of that. I will always use wood and plastic utensils when doing anything with powders because the internet said that somehow metals interfere with whatever powder you're using, so that's what we're gonna stick to. I'm only gonna use half of the pack, even though I feel like that might be too much. This is uh, my first time doing henna in a long time, so I'm just trying to eyeball everything and, and figure it out. So I'm gonna start off with that much. Actually, I'm gonna add a little bit more henna just to be on the safe side. I'd rather have more henna than less henna because I can always save it by freezing it or putting it in the refrigerator. So first I'm gonna start with using a half a cup of water and I'm just gonna eyeball it and play with it because there's a particular texture that I'm looking for, which I feel like I will achieve if I eyeball it versus doing measurements. Now I'm gonna add in the rest of the olive oil and as you can see, that's too much. I underestimated how much olive oil was in the bottle. That's too much oil, but I'm gonna fix it. And because it's so much olive oil, I can't put any coconut oil in it. It's just, there's, there's no point. It's so much oil. So I'm just gonna omit the coconut oil altogether. So now that I've mixed the oil, water, and henna as best as I can, I'm gonna add a little bit more water to loosen it up a little bit more. Okay, that's much, much, much better. It still has like a like a brownie-like consistency and it, it looks like it has too much oil because it's still sliding. So what I'm gonna do is add a little bit more henna so I can firm up the mixture. Henna is also very messy, so the thicker the mixture, the easier it is to transport the henna directly onto your hair without splashing and getting all over the place. Boom, now it's perfect. I love the consistency, it's thick, it's moving around, it's not sliding all over the place. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to cover it with foil and leave it out on the counter overnight so that the henna can release that lossom ingredient that makes the hair stain red. Now my hair is black, so I'm not pressed for the red, but I also want the ingredients to infuse with each other. Okay, so I left it out overnight and then I had to put it in the refrigerator because I couldn't get to it immediately. So this is what it looks like. It's a little bit more red, so you can tell that the dye has released and it is ready to be applied to your clean, clean hair. Okay, so I'm going to be applying the henna to my hair in four sections, wearing an old t-shirt that I don't care about because like we said, henna is staining hence the gloves because we don't want our hands turning red for you know raking in the henna for a long period of time so now the henna is nice and thick and i can apply it to my hair from root to tip and i'm being very delicate in the way that i put this in my hair it's a very thick mixture i don't want to cause my hair to get tangled so i just want to move slow and make sure that every single strand is coated so i'm going to run down a few reasons why i'm doing this henna mask treatment in the first place the first reason is because when the henna actually binds to your hair strands, it fills in whatever holes and gaps that may be in your hair strand because of breakage or heat or whatnot, and it actually makes the hair strand stronger. It also coats each individual strand, making it feel thicker. So not only is it filling in the gaps, it's sealing the entire hair strand to help prevent any more breakage from happening. It also smooths the hair cuticle that lays on top of the hair strand, making it look shiny. And lastly, as my reasoning for doing this henna mask is it stretches my curls to show length. I wanna see the length, I wanna see my actual length. Everybody knows that shrinkage is such 
it's such a thing and you can't really do anything about it so this is one of the ways where you can kind of trick your hair for a little bit so to speak but it does have this loosening effect and i think it's because if the hair strand is being coated and being you know made fuller or thicker it could be also not could be also it could also be weighing the hair down thus stretching the curl and this loosening effect that we all know and love doesn't last long i don't even think it lasts a week maybe a couple of days if you happen to wash your hair within the next couple of days but it don't last long at all but it's still nice when you have it i would also like to make a side note this particular brand of henna that i'm using is not a hundred percent natural henna it also contains um, two other Ayurvedic type powders and they include Amla and Shikakai. Both of these powders have tons of vitamins and minerals that are good for your hair, your body, your skin, all those things. But in particular, Amla darkens the hair, which is the reason why it says black on the package, which is why I wanted it so it can be darker. Shikakai is more on the cleanser side of the game, so they're included in a lot of shampoos. But like I said, they both have a lot of the same properties and the same benefits conditioning strengthening they all promote hair growth but here's what i will say about hair growth i personally believe that your hair is going to grow at the speed that it grows i believe that genetics can be involved i believe that nutrition can be involved i don't know if there is actually a way to make your hair grow faster because if it was nobody would be bald ever but instead of trying to make your hair grow faster, I feel like what you should focus on is length retention. So on average, hair grows about half an inch per month, which means you can grow six inches of hair in a year. But if you're not taking care of your hair the way you should, if your hair is breaking off, split ends, you're not getting your hair trimmed, you won't see those six inches. Which is why I'm doing the henna mask in the first place because it is a great way to retain my length. I'm going to use a plastic shower cap because I ran out of saran wrap and I'm gonna place it on my head and stick it on nice and tight. And then I'm gonna put my turban towel on so I can have the plastic stuck to my head securely. And then I'm gonna freeze the rest of the henna and I'll use it probably next month. It should still be good. So here's what my hair is looking like after three hours per the package instructions. Some people leave it in longer in hopes of a better result, but I don't think that actually makes a difference. I also forgot to mention that any henna that got on my skin or my neck, I wiped it off as soon as possible with some witch hazel. After rinsing all of that henna out of my hair, I went ahead and shampooed it with this Alma shampoo that I got at the Indian store as well. And it has a bunch of other stuff that's good for your hair in it too. Then I followed it up with the Garnier Fructis Pure Clean Fortifying Conditioner. So here's the thing, henna can leave your hair feeling really dry afterwards. So it's better to do a deep conditioning treatment right after you do the henna mask. I realized at the very last second that the only deep conditioner I have is a protein deep conditioner and the internet says do not do a protein deep conditioning treatment after you do a henna mask. So for the time being and for the sake of this video, I left in the Garnier Fructis in for about 15 minutes until I get some deep conditioner the next day. And even without having a deep conditioner, it still feels really soft. My curls look a little bit elongated, a little bit. They're nice and clumped up as well. My scalp is looking really clean. My grays are bright red. You can't tell on camera, but they are definitely bright, bright red in the front. After further inspection, my hair definitely looks a little bit looser in the curl and it does look shiny and is very lightweight and very, very soft. So now I'm gonna continue the routine with styling my hair, starting with the Shea Moisture Raw Shea Butter Moisture Retention Conditioner. Immediately, immediately, I can feel the difference while I'm putting on this conditioner on my hair. It is so much smoother and easier. My ends are a little rough. They're the oldest parts of your hair, so I would get a little resistance in putting on my styling products, but now it's just gliding through and look at the shine. Quick little note, henna does not wash out. Henna is bound to your hair strands. It coats it, it fills in the gap, so you can't wash it out. The only way to get rid of henna is to cut it out of your hair. So if you plan on trying to dye it or bleach it or lift it in any kind of way, this treatment isn't for you. Then I'm gonna follow it up with my new favorite product, the Camille Rose Natural Curl Aid Moisture Butter. And because my battery is about to die on my camera, um, I'm not gonna section it off. I'm just gonna smooth it in as fast as I possibly can so I can just hurry up and finish this video. 
she's here she's arrived we are done honey and you know what not bad for not having a deep conditioning treatment i'm still looking shiny i'm still looking healthy I feel like I'm looking thicker. I really forgot how good these henna treatments are. I did end up doing a deep conditioning treatment the next day, so my hair came out even better. I believe I covered everything that I possibly can in this video, but if you still have any more questions, leave them in the comments. Subscribe, and thank you for watching.